The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the QATV staff or board of directors. QATV, in compliance with FCC regulations, is prohibited from exercising control over the content of independent, member-produced public access programming. Hi, welcome to the show, Constitution oh. Then and Now. Oh, yeah. uh, thanks for watching. Um, I got my guests here, some guests. I got a special guest that came all the way from New Jersey. Your arms tired? You flew in? No, okay. no. I, Amtrak. I, I, Amtrak. 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 Hey, hey, Amtrak. A seller all the way, baby. <laughs> <laughs> my guest, of course, has been on my show quite a few times. Is Hal Schrifflin from the uh, uh, John Birch Society. Of course, they all know Reverend Sean Harrison from Boston. And my special guest here, and I appreciate you coming in, Reverend Stephen Clark. From Craft. New Jersey, Craft. I'm sorry, yeah. from New Jersey. Thank you for I having me. I really appreciate you coming in. I watched some of your videos uh, when I knew you were coming. When Alan told me, and um, one of the ones I was I was very uh, was very interesting. Is you talked about a boy growing up in New Jersey. You talked about segregation and uh, how you walked. You know, if you, maybe you could explain, of course can explain to the people better. You talked about how you walked up um, swimming pool. I guess. To, to the swimming pool. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, was no no uh, no black kids could swim. There it was just white kids only. So, but you you were referring to the fact that it, not, you did, it just didn't happen down south. That's we right. had our problems up here too. Which I, right. and I've talked about it on this show many times because mm -hmm. I have posters and stuff. As I'm a collector of, I can tell you of, of old like broadsides, newspapers, and books, and as you can see and everything. Mm -hmm. And I have lots of book. I have I'm sorry, lots of uh, bro posters from the 1860s and even beyond from, from theaters here in Boston. And it says right in it, third balcony only, blacks only, blacks you know, mm -hmm. no, 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 no color down in the, in the good seats. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there was, you know, you, maybe it wasn't racist as far as slavery here in the south, in the north, but there certainly was racist. Exactly. Okay? But if you could just think, maybe tell that story uh, a little bit better than me, of course. Well, I was born in New Brunswick, New Jersey, which is in central Jersey, October 10th, 1943. I'm a Jerseyan to heart. Been in New Jersey all my life. I grew up in New York City in the Bronx. But back in the 50s, we lived, my sister, my brother, and I, we lived three blocks from the swimming pool, which is a major swimming pool, had a beautiful fence around it, very nice swimming pool right off of Livingston Avenue. Livingston Avenue is the, one of the main drags in New Brunswick to, even to this day. And we would always remember during the heat of the summer, my sister and I, we would walk to the swimming pool, which was in walking distance to our house, and we'd look through the wire fence, and we would see the white kids swimming, and there was a big sign, no coloreds allowed, because that's what we were called back during Jim Crow coloreds. And we would watch the kids swimming, and it would just break our hearts, but we couldn't swim there. So then after, and I used to march with King and, and, and what have you, but then after laws against Jim Crow were dismantled, the owner of that swimming pool, rather than permit blacks to swim in there, he sold the property. The next person that brought that swimming pool cemented the thing and turned it into a parking lot. Mm -hmm. Today, wow. that same place is no longer a parking lot, it's a strip shopping center to this day and wow. it really every time I'm on Livingston Avenue which is like maybe two or three times a month I'll look at that strip shopping center and remember all the way back to the 50s when that used to be a white swimming pool under Jim Crow segregation so yes there's always been a spirit of Jim Crow throughout the nation in quote unquote liberal New Jersey but it was just a different type. It was more of the covert rather than the overt time of racism. But coming back in my generation because of the fact that I can look back in hindsight and, and then look forward, mm -hmm. I'm able at 70 years old to put everything in proper perspective and understand that racism <laughs> comes in all colors. All colors. It's not, a, it, it ain't about white racism. No. Uh, no, 
racism is a spirit. It's a spirit that grips the heart of fallen human beings. And because of that, we are never going to solve, quote unquote, the problem of racism through legislation, political action, or any such thing. It's a spiritual issue. And we've got to deal with it as a spiritual issue. And when we see so-called politicians get on their platform and say, well, if I am elected, I yeah. will. Oh, they're going to fight racism. Somehow <laughs> yeah. you're going to go just you're gonna fight this You're going to fight a racism. spirit. <laughs> yeah. And it's just not real. It's just no, it's not, not. going to happen. And that's mm -hmm. why I always appreciate, as a minister of the gospel, looking at things from a moral and spiritual perspective because mm -hmm. the tap root of all of our problems in the United States of America today, the tap root is spiritual and moral, yes, not sir. political, no. not economic. No. We have mm -hmm. economic and political right. ramifications, mm -hmm. but the tap root is moral and spiritual. Moral and spiritual. And as long as we don't deal with that, we're just batting in the wind. It's not yeah. going to happen. Let me ask you something, mm -hmm. and, I, and I've talked with the Rev about this many times, and of course I, I love the Constitution, I, I also love that period of time and studying it and what went on that time to bring us to the revolution and beyond. And something I have found by talking, especially young kids, uh, is that there are so many kids, white, black, everything else, there, that don't realize how much the blacks had to do with our Constitution. You know, the Ch uh, went, went with Cheswells and, and, and the others, which do you know who he was? Went with Cheswell. No, 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 yeah, I'm he, not really a historian. I don't really keep up with Okay, yet. well, just, just let me, I'll explain okay. him to you. He was a gentleman, okay, that was born. His grandfather was born into slavery, and they, mm -hmm. and the, but they came out of slavery uh, mm -hmm. because he was given his freedom in 1717. Mm -hmm. And he, they came up this way, and they lived up by Byfield. In fact, if, you ever, if you're ever up in Raleigh, Massachusetts, on Route 1, Byfield, Massachusetts. Yes, if you're ever up in uh, Raleigh, Massachusetts, and you go down a little ways, uh, you'll see, uh, you'll see gov the gov Governor, uh, Drummer's, Governor Drummer's Academy. He went to that, okay? He was the, he, he for over 40 years, was the largest pastor of a church, white church, the largest in New England. He was he was he was he was elected to um, uh, all kinds of. He was a uh, justice of the peace. He was a constable. He was l elected to the legislature, uh, all types of different things. But he also became a very inter uh, involvement in the Revolutionary War. Um, and and there, there are others too. I, I mean, I can go on about him, but you know, you, you should look him up sometime. Right, some of the I others, like that. Frederick Douglass. Okay, well, I'm familiar. You know, you know, your friend. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when Fred and they were all Republicans. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I, I've been trying to get the ref to understand that that they were all Republicans. You know, as, as um, Frederick Douglass said, mm -hmm. I was I was born in the Republic, and I'll always be a Ooh, Republican. Martin Luther King was a Republican. Most blacks today don't know that. Well, mm -hmm. See, I just learned that. something. <laughs> you didn't know that? No. Oh no. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Read Come on, some Don. Of, yeah, well. yeah. Oh yeah. The NRA was for they started it to to arm blacks against the Klan. Yes. Clan. yes. Most folks was, don't know that. Yeah, that was a civil war so civil yeah. war generals after yeah. the war. Yeah, there is so much yeah, ignorance they, or revised, you know, revised. there's so much mess out there today that with this revision revising of true history mm -hmm. that it's pathetic. And that's the reason why there is so much people like yourself that has these programs, you know, it's so important that we get out there and begin to speak to these issues and begin to challenge people, right. yeah. you know, and call them to say, okay, do you want, are you really one that wants to believe the truth or are you an embracer of falsehood? Mm -hmm. We have to challenge people today. This is not yeah. a time mm -hmm. for soft preaching and smooth preaching. We're in a very dangerous time in our nation today. And we need the prophetic voice, Reverend, we do, were, which we don't before have. Before the show, we were talking about um, how there's a lot of black ministers that promote the gospel. You listen to their sermons, and it's sound preaching. Mm -hmm. They get off the pulpit, and they're marching with guys like Obama, mm -hmm. who stand for everything opposite. And I say it's one of the mysteries, so maybe you can discuss that well, a little bit. Well, this is what I believe, and I'd like you, my brother, to, to also give me what you're saying. Mm -hmm. In the black community, it's almost like what the Apostle Paul said to the church at Galatia. Oh, foolish Galatians, Galatians who, who has deceived you or bewitched you that you would not obey, obey the truth. Mm -hmm. See, we could take that very phraseology in 
the book of Galatians and, and, and contemporize it and say, oh, foolish black Americans, who has bewitched you? Bewitched you. How has Obama bewitched you mm -hmm. that you would not believe the truth? Choose you this day who you're going to mm -hmm. serve. Yes, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve so the Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. How can you sit up? I, I have a, 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 something that I play with within. And I say, are you a Sunday Christian or a Tuesday Christian? Well, what do you mean by that, Sunday Christian or Tuesday Christian? <laughs> a Sunday Christian is one that sits up in the house of the Lord on Sunday, shouts hallelujah, yeah. and prays the Lord, and, amen. and preach it, preach it, <laughs> and amen. <laughs> and then on Tuesday, election day, election day, go behind the curtain on the down low and pull the lever for Obama <laughs> and all this nonsense. What kind of Christian are you? Mm -hmm. It's a mystery, but it's a mystery that I believe with all my heart is, is that is rooted in witchcraft. Mm -hmm. You're right. See, yeah, it's, right. Nothing, it's nothing that you can explain any other mm -hmm. way. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is rooted in witchcraft, because that's what the Apostle Paul said to the said, church at Galatia, yeah. when yeah, they were a man yeah. holding not only to what the Apostle Paul taught, but then what the Gnostics, right. who had another gospel, mm -hmm. which is no gospel. Yeah. Because it's a false gospel. Yeah. See, so when Paul says, who has bewitched you, he's saying right there, just like the Galatian church, strayed from the straight and narrow gospel that Paul preached mm -hmm. to start believing the lie of the Gnostics who said, well, we have hidden knowledge. Hidden knowledge, yeah. 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 Eh? yeah. Eh? <laughs> eh? So that's what we're dealing with today. And that's why when you speak, and that's why I want to hear what my brother has to say, that's why when you speak to black Christians today about this whole issue, they, it's like, man, it's like some kind of scale yeah. 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 comes over there. Comment it's, on it's that. It's very true because I've been working, oh, my God, over 30 years within the city with the preachers when all this mm -hmm. gang stuff happened. Mm -hmm. And one thing I noticed, like you said, about the preachers, we preach the truth in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. But once we leave that pulpit, mm -hmm. they're behind closed doors with mm -hmm. the mayor, with the governor, yeah, yep. other political um organizations that's out there for this yeah come on it used to be where we had a passion for young people out in the street and mm -hmm. a passion for souls mm -hmm. and we didn't look for government to take care of us the right. government really looked to the church come on for help now we're looking for the government for help mm -hmm. and because they got money coming down like the mayor and i'll name out from rivers and all of them mm -hmm. it's like we used to go to a meeting but they already had the meeting yeah. Oh, with yeah. the mayor so, yeah, and the certain preachers. So yeah. when us yeah. young preachers came in, yeah. decisions was already made. Mm -hmm. So it was like a dog and pony show. Mm -hmm. And we as young ministers refused to get caught up in the, in the politics there. We uh, did what we felt and know that God has called us to do. Mm -hmm. We didn't ask for, uh, I didn't ask the mayor for no money and I asked Rivers for no money. I didn't ask none of them because mm -hmm. the scripture says, don't eat at the king's table. Mm -hmm. And they're eating at the king's table every day. Mm -hmm. And deals are being made. Mm -hmm. And well, now when you have all these preachers back in Molly Walls, it's because I want a position. Mm -hmm. I want something I want at City you. Hall. I want a position at um, the table. Right. Mm -hmm. And I need some money. Mm -hmm. Before, it, it's supposed to be a passion. Mm -hmm. But we turn this thing, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a business now. They mm -hmm. sit in the leather seats in the big office. Mm -hmm. And I'm dying for somebody to do a research and all the money that came down through the many years to deal with all these gangs in the city, mm -hmm. where did that money go? Where's the measurable outcome? Because mm -hmm. I didn't see no kids stay out of gang. Mm -hmm. Matter right. of fact, they more got murdered yeah. and yeah. murked. Yeah. And even preachers who was working with some of these gangbangers mm -hmm. kind of set some of these gangbangers up. Mm -hmm. And they knew. And I know a preacher now that's got to carry a bulletproof vest. Mm because of that situation, mm. okay? So I don't get involved with the preachers in there. Yeah. I, I respect them, but I'm not gonna compromise. Mm -hmm. I don't, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pa help pastoring my friend's church mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the question comes up with the, with mm -hmm. the gay issue. Mm -hmm. Listen, if they wanna come to church and get saved mm -hmm. right. and get delivered, mm -hmm. I ain't got a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But they can't come up here and mm -hmm. have office, play the piano, play mm -hmm. the organ, mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. that's night and day. Mm -hmm. Night and day mm -hmm. don't mix. Right. If I shut that light off, it's all darkness. Mm -hmm. Switch it on, it's all light. Come on. See? And, it, and even in my school, we can't have a Bible so that we can't have prayer, but yet mm -hmm. we got the Gay Alliance. Mm -hmm. They got gay Gee stuff fire. going on there. And they had the poster coming out of the closet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. this, was in a, this was in a public school. You this know? is yeah. the Boston Green Academy, which is still an in-district charter school. Right. And they put posters up. They have a group. They talk about this. They talk about that. And it's like, but we can't talk about Bible. We can't bring our Bibles in. We yeah, can't I, have Bible I said, study. I said, I said that for you. You bring it up. This is from, uh, I told you, I, I collect old stuff. Uh, this is from, uh, what's the year on this now? Um, I forget now. I was on here. From the 1950s, anyways. And that's it. The Massachusetts Teachers uh, School and Educational Journal. And um, it's the fourth volume of it. It is from 1959. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was born. 1859. Oh, I, 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 I apologize. I'll tell you, Reverend, 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 if you look, this is the manual for the Boston Teachers Society. Here was one of the classes. Mm -hmm. The qualifications for which I deem essential to the due performance of a master's duty here may in brief be expressed as the spirit of a Christian and a gentleman. See, that's politically incorrect today. Yeah. Today you can't yeah. do it. You can't but do back it. Then why, you could. why wasn't it unconstitutional it. then? Huh? For the and simple reason that it was never unconstitutional. Everything is turned upside down. Um, exactly. You read the state constitution. The Massachusetts State Constitution mm -hmm. and many others. Yeah, the preamble. It says that the purpose of government is to promote morality, piety, mm -hmm. that when you elect right. officials, these people you elect have to have these certain qualities, yep. frugality, mm -hmm. yep. morality, well, mm -hmm. and it says that it's the duty of every person to worship the great architect of the universe. Mm -hmm. They weren't talking about Bechtel Corporation. <laughs> They're talking about the Lord, the Lord God. Right. Well, you, you, That's you, right. You talk about that. Here's a book by Noel Webster. The writer of the writer of the um, the dictionary mm -hmm. and many of other things, the founding father, and anything else. But I think what's what's happening now. What, in, what in happened our society was what happened was in the, in the beginning. This is too much compromising, and I'm talking oh, about yeah. compromising within the body of Christ, within mm -hmm. the church, yeah, because yeah, everybody but, has yeah. to be political correct. Well, yeah, you have and to I'm be I'm not going to be political correct. How that? Because we got to go according to what the Bible says. Yeah, mm -hmm. how the, how that all started was in the 19, about 1947 in the Warren courts. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, Warren, Warren. Mm -hmm. yeah, they started to go over to, up until that time, they always said, of course you can pray in school, mm -hmm. of course you can do, have God in school, Christmas mm -hmm. and everything else like that. But all of a sudden, the new court came along with, you know, the Eisenhower started to put people in, plus they already had some people on that court. And they came along and they said, oh, no, 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 Jefferson's separation. Letter, yeah. Jefferson's letter yeah, of separation of church and state church is, does, means you can't say that in school. Say that. Now, when you go back and you read Jefferson's letter, I always tell everybody, read Jefferson's letter in the oh, entirety. The Baptist, read, read, yeah. yeah, read the but whole But a letter thing. isn't the Constitution. It's no, a letter. But even exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But you read the whole letter. That's right. It was the Danbury's Baptist Connecticut mm -hmm. Society of Connecticut, naturally, who wrote him a letter wishing him a, you know, a, uh, a great presidency, wishing him all the mm -hmm. best luck in the world, blah, blah, blah. And they also said, hey, wait a minute. <clears throat> well, we got the, well, we're writing this letter. You know, uh, we're kind of concerned about what this First Amendment really means. Now, prior to that, he defeated John Adams. John Adams was a liberal, or, or a Federalist, as we'd call him back then, a liberal now, okay? The okay. House and the Senate were also were a Federalist. The people not only, they, Je Jefferson was not only elected, but the House was turned over into anti-Federalist, and so wasn't the Senate at the same time, okay? So this letter comes along right after he becomes president, and Jefferson answers the letter, and he says, thank you very much for all your kind, kind concerns, wish me my best in the presidency and everything else. He says, but he says, I ha I, you have no fear. There is a wall of separation, right. and, the, and, the, and the government can never cannot jump that wall mm -hmm. and go, come in and tell you what your religion is. Mm -hmm. Now, prior to the courts always say, well, Jefferson's letter. Well, first of all, up until the 1940s, Whenever the Supreme Court, who I don't, who I agree, who I disagree that they can even look at that stuff because they're the th third branch of the government, which is the weakest branch of the that's government, right. <laughs> and it says they they should sit upon good behavior. And that's not good behavior, okay? But um, they, up until that time, they always said Jefferson's letter was he was correct. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you can't tell them they can't talk, can't, uh, talk, talk about God in school or anything like mm -hmm. that, okay? And but so when in as I tell a lot of people, you've got to understand, Jefferson never wrote the Constitution. No. You're yeah, arguing Madison. about a guy that didn't even write it. <laughs> right. and you're using yeah. him, you're using yeah. him yeah. as your, your go-to man, and he didn't even write it. He was over in, in, in France at the time as an ambassador, and he, um, a guy named Joseph Priestley, a friend of his here in the United States, tried to line Jefferson with it, and Jefferson found out about it, wrote him a letter and said, hey, take me out of there. I never, I never saw the Constitution. I had one letter. 
As, well, over in France about it, I know nothing really about it. You know the we, author of the First Amendment, the primary author? Fisher Ames. Fisher Ames yeah. from Dedham, Dedham Massachusetts, Massachusetts, just a few yeah. towns away. It, 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 and he father said... Father of the First Amendment and also one of the fathers of the public schools. And he said that the Bible should be the main textbook mm -hmm. in every single Absolutely. public school. Absolutely. The Absolutely. man who wrote the First Amendment. Yes. You know? and him, him along with wow. Noah Webster, mm -hmm. who wrote the first three, three uh, school, public school books. In, through all this thing, through all of this, you can um, see nothing but all stuff about we, God. We here. brought a book that I want you to hold up that Reverend Kraft and uh, Garrett Lee are uh, co-authored. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, America's uh, Dynamic Duel, uh, mm -hmm. Fr Freedom and Morality, America's Dynamic Duel, and then Camp Constitution Dynamic Duel. Yeah. But Reverend Kraft's portion of it, he has excerpts from state constitutions. Mm -hmm. I don't the know preambles. about maybe 15 all or so. The, of all the state Quite constitutions. Quite a few of the states. Mm -hmm. And yeah. every one of them, for example, let me just... Uh, I'll just well, read. Well, I'll well, just. I'll just. Well, you're read. looking. You gotta. You gotta remember. Okay. Thing. For example, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm just gonna read a couple to you. Sure. Massachusetts preamble, 1780. Quote: We, the people of Massachusetts, acknowledge with grateful hearts the goodness of the great legislator of the, of the universe in the course of his providence and opportunity and devoutly imploring his direction. Right. That don't sound like a deist or secularist to me. No. Mm -hmm. Or a member of let, the ACLU. Now let me ask you guys. Your, 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 in, your take on this. This is what really frustrates me. Why would you say it is that with this knowledge out there concerning the perversion of the First Amendment, and yet we have so-called conservative scholars and attorneys, makes no difference if the Republicans right. control the House, the Senate, the Supreme Court and the, the executive branch, or the liberals, the Democrats, nothing changes. Mm -hmm. Why is it that since 1973, Roe v. Wade is still on the books, not been overturned. but yet we keep hearing this pro-life talk? <laughs> well, let me ask you something. Why is it we have, why would we even have Roe v. Wade? It never went to the people. Exactly. Su Supreme Court turned around and said, made a law. They, they voted for us. Exactly. Well, what they did is they overturned yeah. laws, well, just that, like state laws. Still, that they had no right to do it. Well, it's That's just right. like this, this Obamacare nonsense. No, yeah. you go have it. You need it. Yeah. And yeah. he keeps changing it. And <laughs> he keeps it. changing it. Because the thing well, is bogus from the Gideon. He, he, yeah. he mentioned the spiritual attitudes. And that's the, the indifference of the average American. Today, this could be yeah. turned overturned in one election cycle. Thank yeah. you. If we elect the people who have strong convictions and say, that's I'm not going well, to go in the back room and make deals. But I think that's the problem. Mm -hmm. even, it passes all over the country. Mm -hmm. And we have a small portion that really wants to fight, but they need others to get on Come board on, across right. the country. Come well, on, talk about Boston. Yeah. yeah. It's black not going to happen. Yeah. Talk about the black It's not going to happen in Boston. Yeah. You know, because clergy. I don't see it happening in Pudong, Mississippi. It's not going to happen. I went down, check this out. Well, you know something? It could happen. You know, uh, I, mean, God, I mean, well, I would say it's yes, going to have to be a move of God. Right. Right. It's going to have to be a move of God. God. Let me tell you what That's happened. We can't see from what we look at. It's right. a whole place. Exactly. <laughs> Gentlemen, let me You're tell you right. what happened to me. You're right. You're right. Let me tell you what happened to me just two months ago, last week in October, because not only am I an ordained minister, I'm also a motivational speaker. I went down to Houston to an event. I won't mention the name of the organization, but it's a national secular organization that promotes events to campuses, to community colleges, four-year colleges and universities, right? And speakers sign up to go and do what's called a showcase. And what a showcase is, is they put you on stage for 10 minutes yeah, yeah. and you try to sell your program to college students and event planners who can then book you, book you. at a later time to come to their, stu their colleges mm -hmm. and present to get paid, right? Yep. Yeah. I go down there. I join the organization. I go down there. Everybody that got booked was either hypnotists, sexologists, <laughs> stand-up comedians, uh, or musicians. With dirty mouths, I bet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you may get I come down there with a message of leadership through building strong character. I got the DVD. I'll send you a copy. The kids all high-fived me and gave me kudos after my 10-minute presentation but you know what i didn't get jack of course yep. as far as bookings yep. not one not they had one dude who looked like man the devil's advocate 
This guy looked evil. He looked like, man, a reincarnation, man, he of Anton he, he, LaVey. He, he. I am dead. Oh, no, I'm serious. He I am dead gig, serious. He got the gig. Oh, he, 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 I'm dead serious. <laughs> this guy was a hypnotist. You could see, man, evil in this guy's eyes. This guy's showcase, he called up, man, students, volunteer, to volunteer for what he was going to do. A whole lot of students busted for the platform, but he had chairs set up for 10 of them. The first 10 that got up there, he sat down in the chair. I'm sitting there watching this and couldn't believe it. He literally put these kids, these college kids, into a hip, not, not a trance, and then told them once he got into their subconscious mind, he says, all of you males, I'm going to transform you into females. And all you females, I'm going to transform into males. I'm sitting there watching this, figuring it's some kind, okay. of, some kind of scam, right? The first person to stand up, stage left, was this white girl. She looked maybe 21, 22. You'd look at their mugs, at their faces, and you could tell they were really under some kind of trance. They wasn't just playing along with yeah. this guy. This soft, spooky music playing in the background. Oh, yeah, yeah. He says to her, what is your name? She responds with a male voice and a male name. Wow. She says, my name. name is Robert. The crowd went wild. I'm sitting there. I said, the devil is He's a liar. liar. <laughs> then he asks a follow-up question. He says, and Robert, what do you want out of life? You know what this guy said? This, 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 girl. this, this girl said, I want a man that is well endowed. I said, I can't believe this. He goes on down the line, finally comes to a black male student. He says to him, what is your name? He flips the, the script and says, my name is Kimberly. <laughs> Jesus, he says, what do you want? I want a, I want a man that can cook. <laughs> and all of them, when you look at their faces, you could tell they was under some kind of demonic spell. They weren't just it. playing with this guy. Then he snapped him out of that, and before he snapped him out of it, guess what he told him? He says, what you have received, the gift you have received today will always be there for you. Wow. Well, I, guess I, I heard said, that. I you said, know what that was I did. Yeah, yeah, thank you. you. Already know. I told my wife when I got <laughs> back to Jersey, I said, when them kids start getting these strange feelings, what? they ain't going to know. They ain't going to know. Play back and remember no. that that guy put something in their but spirit. He, and he gets spirit. booked to go to college. He, yeah. man, the guy got books. He got, man, he got invites off the chain. That's the reason why when I, I don't use, when you know me, how these brothers just met me. But when I'm speaking somewhere, whether it's to a secular audience or a Christian audience, I will never use the terms that the left uses. Yeah. Because one, the debate 101 says this. If you use the terms of you your buy, opponent. You buy their definitions. Right. Yeah. You lose, yeah. coming out the gate. Yeah. 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 You use the Bible's terms. In other words, I don't use the term gay. I use the term sodomite because the term gay has no, no, no Holy Ghost power behind it. The Bible doesn't say the gays. No, the Bible says, says sodomites. the sodomites. sodomites. And that's why you see them rise up when you oh, hit like with, yeah. Yeah, same yeah, with yeah, the yeah. abortion yeah. issue. You don't yeah. use the term Pro choice, choice yeah. or yeah. abortion. You, you use the term the shedding of innocent yeah. blood. Because, see, when you use the biblical term for any of these sins, the Holy Ghost then moves because the Bible says the Holy Ghost will convict the world of sin, righteousness, yes. and eternal judgment. Eternal. But when you use their terms, you then lessen, you lessen the power of the Spirit of God sure. to convict them of sin. See, that's why with these jive preachers that my brother's talking about, that we know well as ministers, mm -hmm. You'll never hear them talk about sin. They'll talk about short. Oh, you're right. You never and hear mistakes. It. Never. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, and, you and never. No. Call it what it you is. Never. Right. Because if you're a big time preacher right. and you're making 40 grand in just the morning service, you have three services and tithes and offering, the first service is 40,000, the Come next on. one might be 20,000. Come on. I'm not going to preach it. You don't want to offend anybody. They'll leave no. the church, no. right? Alcohol no. or drugs. No. If I offend you, I lose, mm -hmm. then I lose money. So I'll yep. sprinkle, talk about mm -hmm. prosperity, there talk you about go. faith, health and healing. talk about health and relationships, healing. relationships. relationships. Mm -hmm. But I will not no. talk he, about no. sin. No. What, what the Bible happen. says sin, what sin is. It's not what are about? Where, where are the Nathans? Of the world, the, the Nathan the that went to King Where's David. Where's the Elijahs? Where's the John? Because I have never heard 
Any no. churches in Boston no. have preached against homosexuality, yeah. Yeah. have preached against no. incest, has no. preached against no. uh, drugs, or adultery. alcohol, yeah. adultery. It's not going to no. happen. Or fornication. No. You know why? Because it's happening within and, the church. And, right, right. and with the preachers. Exactly. And I won't name no name, but two weeks ago, mm -hmm. somebody was moving from, from where I lived at, mm -hmm. and I know this bishop very well. Mm -hmm. And mom pulls up with two of her daughters and how can you do that? You a demon. You're supposed to be a bishop. Mm -hmm. You messing with every girl in the city and now you're gonna marry this one, you're gonna and what don't you care about your daughters? Mm -hmm. And it's like, whoa. So cause you hear things, you don't mm -hmm. want to take it, mm -hmm. you know, but then when you hear it for yourself and mm -hmm. you see it for yourself, mm -hmm. and it's like you got all these bishops and titles, mm -hmm. they got all this power and authority mm -hmm. that they can do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. They can lay with every girl in the church and getting pregnant, mm -hmm. nothing is said, because people believe, well, he's a bishop, he won't do that. Yeah. He's a pastor, you right. go, yeah. are you kidding me? Let me tell you the judgment of God, which yeah, it happens in uh, predominantly white churches, too, I tell yeah, you. Yeah, well, it happens it's, across it's the not, board, across not, the board. Just, uh, yeah. We can't me, say yeah. much about being Catholic, no, no. I can't say <laughs> much. No, don't even, don't even, don't, don't even go there. Go there. <laughs> so let me tell you what happened to judgment of God that fell <laughs> on a blind preacher down south, I think it was in the state of Florida. Some of you guys might have heard about this. This was recently, this was like maybe month and a half ago, two months ago, black preacher down south in Florida, he was messing with this other dude's wife who was a deacon in his church. The preacher was doing a revival in his church. The dude who was a deacon knew that this preacher was messing with his wife. He walks up in the church while the preacher's preaching in the revival and busted a cap in him, shot him dead wow. right in the pulpit. Wow. And then man dropped the weapon and waited for the, po the, waited for the, for police. the police. This guy's in, in jail right now. All you gotta do is just Google a uh, deacon who shoots black preacher mm -hmm. in a revival, far. it'll come up. Yeah, yeah. Shot him dead in the revival, in the pulpit for adultery. That used to be justifiable homicide in some cases. Well, I don't know how they're going to, you know, oh, but that's yeah, what happened. Yeah. Do it there, but that's how, that's what, see, we, we can't play with God. No. We, we you know, <laughs> you know you, we have to start preaching the fear of God again, man. We done lost that. We done lost the that. The youth lost it. I the youth never got it. And the youth would say, well, first of all, how can what? these preachers tell me? Put my gun down. Yeah. Put my Come drug on. down. Come on. Talk about having mediation and conflict with yeah. my enemy when they can't even get along with themselves. Come on. And they argue and fight among themselves. Mm -hmm. Why do I want to go to Come church on. Come on. to fight a try to find some freedom mm -hmm. when there's bondage in the church. Mm -hmm. When you got folks laying up there with mm -hmm. each other, you got the pastors running around. Mm -hmm. You got mm -hmm. um, they don't want to hear money underneath the table. Young folks don't want to hear no, that. No, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. They want, they they want, want something hear real. Truth and real. Young right. folks today right. want to hear something that's real right. and it's true. Or don't else come what, up don't with come, some, don't come some up. fake stuff. Exactly. And that's why they don't come to church that's today. Come on. It's not because come on. they don't love God and they don't pray. Right. They said, but I want to get my life changed. Yeah. I can't get chains in there because mm. people in there is all beat up and messed up. Right, and phony. You know, you talk about that because you know, it, cause it reminds me of a story that was told. That you got a kid on, you brought a kid on here from, the, from who you're trying to help out. And I asked him, I, you probably remember the story. I asked I him, I said, you know, wh why do you do drugs and why do you sell drugs and everything else like that? And he said, well, you see, he said, you have to understand something. He says, first of all, he says, my mother and my grandmother, I don't have, he, said, he doesn't have a father. He says, my mother and my grandmother are both on alcohol and, and crack and everything else, and they spend all the money on that. Mm -hmm. My gang, he has two young, he has a younger brother and a sister. He says, my gang takes care of them. Takes care of them. We, they make sure we have enough food. They make sure I get the clothing on my, my, my sister and my brother and everything. He says, that's my family. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does somebody... How can somebody argue with that with them? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Stuff, yeah. How can you how can yeah. you turn around and just say, well, you know, that's still you shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, well, my no, brother yeah. and sister's got a yeah. roof over their yeah. head and they're eating and they got clothes on. Because I have dealt with, when a couple of years ago we had Shavu roller skating ring. We had uh, for a whole year we did. We had gangs from all over come. Mm -hmm. It's free. Mm -hmm. Ain't gonna be no drama. Mm -hmm. Have a good time. And mm -hmm. I was dealing with Johnson Road right across the street. I got them kids. After Shavu, like 12, 1 o'clock, I got them in the That's house cooking. Rink in yeah. Boston, yeah. I cooked them breakfast. Mm -hmm. And I just talk and they shared about their life. And one of the kids, um, Masai, who's on the Liz Walker show, Channel 5, and they was constantly coming, put the guns down. I went to one of the city leaders, listen, give me some money so mm -hmm. I can take them to Country Buffet. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, y'all did add. 
they did what y'all asked them to do, cease fire. They're coming. They're not, you know, doing anything. You know, they're not hanging in the street. They're coming with me. Nah, I'm not giving you nothing to take them nowhere. I don't care about those kids. So this whole thing that you put together for a whole year was just to build up your, your status? Hirelings. Hirelings. They don't care Hirelings. about young people in Hirelings. the city. They don't. Because if they did, Hirelings. we would not have the drama that we have in the city of Boston right now. With all these big churches, mega churches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mega churches, yeah. and we still got crime coming out of our ears. Yeah. Kids still ain't got no job. Yeah. And if, I, if I'm a kid and you're telling me to put down the guns, put down the drugs, mm -hmm. what What's do you the got the for me? What's okay. my option? Now, I know you're going to give me Jesus. I know that. Yeah. But I need some resources. Mm -hmm. I need a job. Can you give me a job? Mm -hmm. You can't give me a job. Mm -hmm. I got to do what I have to do. Yeah, you they, can't tell me with all yeah, these exactly. mega churches that can't pull exactly. together. Exactly. Let, let me say something, though. Even though with all the problems we have in the church today, if it wasn't for the influence of the church, the inner city church, the place would be unlivable. Oh, sure. I, I, I believe that. Right that. Now, with I all the that. flaws that we're pointing yeah. out. Mm -hmm. that there's still the churches are the still the salt yeah and i still think i have to that. i have to uh, here's the thing i have to i don't know if i if i, if I should question that go, go uh, ahead if you want that's what it's all about yeah. young people don't have a fear of god or the church because they can run up in the church and do whatever they want to do yeah. and i think because they don't have a fear of god or a fear of the church or a pastor mm -hmm. is because when we did operation men in black clergy used to go out thursday friday and saturday Pray for now. We hit the streets and mm -hmm. talk to these kids, find out what they needed. Mm -hmm. We did that for a whole year. We bring it to the city. Mm -hmm. city did nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And at that point, young people lost respect mm -hmm. for the church, mm -hmm. for the preachers, and for any elected officials. When you promise these kids something, well, they and you don't, don't talk deliver. Through, but I do believe that we do have a remnant of, uh, of men and women in this city that are praying constantly, like that yeah. is keeping yeah. Yeah. the city together. Yeah. If we didn't have that, I mean, the enemy, uh, the enemy is loose, but I think it'd probably be worse than that if we didn't have real folks. Okay, let's break it down spiritually now as ministers. To be politically correct is to be theologically and biblically incorrect. Conversely, to be biblically and theologically correct is to be politically incorrect. incorrect. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, Jesus says, upon this rock I it's will my build church. my church. My church yeah. The key word is my church. Church. And the gates of hell shall not, shall not prevail against it. Yeah. Now you've got the church, <laughs> and then you've got Christ's church. Christ's church. God has always dealt with a remnant. Right. He never uses a whole no, lot of folks does it. to remnant. do nothing. Why? Because Gideon, no man, army. he's not going to give no one his glory. glory. Nobody is I believe with all my heart of hearts that two things are going to be running paradoxically at the same time in the very near future. In fact, it's already begun. And that is a revival and a great falling that. away. Yep. At the, at, the, at the same time. At the same time. At the same time. At the same time. A revival of those who want nothing less than to show enough, show enough, show enough God. unadulterated, uncompromising gospel, and those who are promoting some kind of religiosity yep. and some kind of phoniness yep. and some mess. Mm -hmm. And they're going to run simultaneously. Why? Because the writer Hebrews said that everything that can be shaken will, will be, be shaken. shaken. Why? So only the unshakable yep. will be able to stand. Able to stand. That's yeah. why persecution has to come, and it's getting hotter and hotter, yeah. because yeah. God is separating well, we wheat from tares. Well, we know it's already here. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not it's so here. much It's getting here. worse. It's going to get worse. With us, it's mainly uh, being shunned or ridiculed. It's going to get worse than that. Some violence. Yeah, I, I do. No, it's going to get worse. The world, look around shunned. the world today. It's going to be worse. In no. Muslim countries, uh, Syria, yeah. I have a church next to me. It's a Syrian church, and they say that there's 10%, Syria is 10% Christian, and uh, they, they were left alone by Assad who is not a good guy, don't get me wrong, but he didn't bother the Christians. Now we're funding in our country uh, under the Obamas, uh, funding mm -hmm. the people that are killing and butchering these mm -hmm. Christians. So and you don't rebel. hear about it on your TV. No, you're not going right? to hear We see it in South yeah, Africa, yeah, which will that. probably happen very soon at, oh, yeah. since Mandela, Mandela died. died. There's mm -hmm. going to be a purging of what's... And there's a lot of Christians in mm -hmm. South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, you see in Muslim countries, you see in Europe, where uh, a homeschooler in Germany 
Mm -hmm. with his family comes over here for a political asylum and they kick him back they're going to jail because mm -hmm. they want to teach their children mm -hmm. what biblical, biblical instead mm -hmm. of the secular stuff yep. mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, and of course we know what's happened in china we know what happens in the soviet union mm -hmm. and persecution is uh mm -hmm. it's been it's been there well, ever since the christianity existed there's been mm -hmm. persecution mm -hmm. but, but we've been pretty immune to that for the most part so bad in, in my day I, I never thought that we would would, would get to this point mm -hmm. that i i would see at this point with the church Churches within Boston, mm -hmm. and with my ministries with youth, to see mm -hmm. so many youth dying, mm -hmm. and yeah. churches are not stepping up to the plate. There yeah. is no cry. I mean, even the politician, black politician, they're not out there in the street. Yeah. They're not out there going to the young people. They're just trying to get reelected, mm -hmm. yeah. get better positions. Mm -hmm. They march in the parades, ma in the parades, especially mm -hmm. the so-called gay pride parade. That's where they all be. Yeah. Yep. And, and the kids are dying every day. Mm -hmm. yep. So, w where is the church? Has to be the question. Where's mm -hmm. the church? What is the church doing? Mm -hmm. And I did to say nothing. Some yeah. churches are doing nothing. Yeah. And the churches that are doing something is that small remnant mm -hmm. that you don't hear about. Their foot, so what we call, what they used to call us foot soldiers, mm -hmm. you know, where nobody even thinks about you. You don't get the credit, well, I, the I, rivers and all them, mm -hmm. but like you got the some, foot I, I like what some of those churches are starting to do. I, I've been reading about it a little bit. Uh, and it basically goes back to the Black Robe mm -hmm. uh, Regiment, um, where they're, they're actually getting up there because of their status of, of 104C, whatever they call it. 501C. 501C, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Where, so they, 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 where they can't talk about politics or else they lose, they lose it. Well, they're getting up there. I don't know if you, you guys have heard about it. They're, not they're, they're, it. they're getting up there, and they're, they're actually talking about re, uh, politics now. Not only that... They're thinking on themselves to the to the IRS, saying, "Hey, my mm -hmm. this church, yes, the, the study." I'm they talk about my sermon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, because what they want yeah. is they is they want the government to come at them, so they, so can, they can take them to court and yeah. say, "Hey, you're wrong." Yeah, but well, you, let, if you notice, the government ain't touching them. Well, they ain't touching them. They're not going to touch them. Well, they, 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 yeah. they, they never will touch them because never. if they yeah. do, they can go right back to the beginning when our founding fathers, after this country was founded. And we and, and mm -hmm. we had our first legislators mm -hmm. were, were in Washington, our mm -hmm. congressmen, our representatives. Uh, Thomas Jefferson just became president, okay? Um, a man named Frederick Mullenberg, Augusta Mullenberg. Yeah, he was, he was, yeah, he was a he reverend, was, you yeah, know him. Yeah. Okay, he was Caldwell, part of the black Caldwell, yeah, yeah, Mullenberg, they were all sure. black robe regiment yeah. preachers. He, he, he was the secretary of Congress. Mm -hmm. He came to Jefferson as Jefferson being the president. He says, you know, Mr. President, he says, we have no place here at all. Mm -hmm. He says, as we're building this great city. Yeah, we have no place to, uh, for any of these workers or uh, people that are living, living here, congressmen and everything else, to go to church. You know, and we have all, they had all different types of denominations. So he says, the Congress has decided that we were going to allow them to use the House of Representatives mm -hmm. as a church, mm -hmm. and the State Department, and the Treasury. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Jefferson kind of like, yeah, okay. So that goes back, and the Congress and how many times has this ever happened? Unanimously vote and say, yes, use, it, use these places as churches. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to the Senate. And again, unanimously they vote for it. Mm -hmm. now, remember now, these are the founding fathers. These are the people that wrote the First Amendment. These are the people that wrote the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. So it goes to there. They vote unanimously. It comes back to Jefferson, and he signs it. It all happened on one day, on a mm -hmm. Friday. Mm -hmm. Jefferson signs it on a Friday. Sunday morning, he's there. in church at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. Not only did they do that, they said, you know, know something? We can't afford to pay these ministers. I mean, the, the people can't pay, afford to pay them. So he says, here's what we'll do. They're going to have dual duties with this, in this legislation. They're going <laughs> to preach in one of the churches, okay, and the government will pay them, plus they'll open up the House and the Senate every day. Well, they still do that. Oh, yeah. Do that. Okay? And they still pay them. Yeah. They still pay and if people don't realize is that when you walk into yeah. the Hall of Congress where all those statues yeah, are, I've that, been was, in there. that yeah. was the church yeah. at one time. Yeah, in the rotunda. Okay. Yes, that yeah. was the church. Not only that, they still have they still have a Bible, I mean, a church in there, a place where you can go exactly. in and pray that still has the original window of George Well, when you go in the Supreme Court, you look right up there, there's Moses. The, there. the Ten Commandments right is up there. there. And yet Why the same Supreme Court come telling you it's unconstitutional. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean, it's ridiculous. No, yeah. Let me address the 501s. That's something that happened during, when well, Lyndon Johnson was a senator uh, from Texas. He was able to, because he knew the churches were speaking out against what well, he was, it was doing. Well, it wasn't so much the churches, but you, you were on the right road. But, but let's, it was, let's, it was let's five C people that were going after him. And it was the middle of, go ahead, you right. tell well, the story. But a church that accepts a 501c3, they're basically saying that the people who donate money to the church, 
It's called a tithe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe we all don't live up to that 10%, but, and God will never raise the taxes, always 10%. He's never, he's never <laughs> went up in the taxes. <laughs> no, kick, you know, no cost of living adjustments here, right? Um, the churches, so the, so the people can deduct that from their income tax, mm -hmm. right? So that church becomes a state-approved church, in essence, a state church. And these same people will say, separate your church and state when it comes to politics or when it comes to praying at a football game, but they are state churches. And I give, I was, uh, uh, this, this kind of spoke to me. Uh, last year, I was taking one of my daughters into Boston. I live right in Boston, but down to, uh, I walked um, from the Boston Public Gardens. We walked across. We saw the church where the North American Man, Man Boy Love Association was founded, right? And I said, this is a state church. And we went to a congregational church that had the rainbow flag, oh. a state church. And then we went to that beautiful Trinity Church, with one of the most beautiful buildings in the country, but not what's inside, whitewashed tomb. Mm -hmm. Right? Why are they state churches? Not because they're all 501c3, but what are they teaching in these churches? Evolution, mm -hmm. homosexuality, yeah. and socialism. Yeah. What is the state teaching? Mm -hmm. yeah. Most Same states thing. and the state government. Mm -hmm. Homosexuality, abortion, and socialism. Mm -hmm. These are the ultimate state churches. Mm -hmm. The Unitarian so what, Church so is what, an adjunct of the what government. The, what yeah. the government is saying is, is that if you become a 501c, you, you, you're a church. We recognize you as a no. real church. What, if you become that, then you lose your First Amendment. That's right. Okay, not only that, if you're a 501 seat, let me ask you this, uh, all right? If they, if they say that, okay, why does government, if government is not supposed to get involved in, with the religion, That's why, does it, why does the church have to get a building permit? That, should be, that shouldn't be allowed. Mm -hmm. Why do they have to get a milk What's license to serve coffee and stuff? Shouldn't be allowed because they're asking government separation. for permission. If, there's, if you really believe in separation, then, that's, then you'd, yeah. you'd say, no, do you want to put a porch on? Go ahead, put a budget. Don't that's come to the government. That's your that's sovereign that. territory. Sovereign right. territory. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it collapses, well, you then, deal with it. You, you deal with it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know what? They, they, there's some magnificent churches <laughs> that have still been standing after hundreds of years. I think they know what they're doing. The yeah. people are building these things. Yeah, the you know? one they built them so, back then. Yeah. Can we get into a little bit about our camp program? Because I think yeah. it's an important... Um, yeah, I'm not even sure how much time we have left. I'm just sitting here talking. When well, you get a couple of pastors you. here, you know, it <laughs> time goes by quickly. How you don't have much time. Involved in it? How did you get involved <laughs> in it? I didn't, I didn't catch the question. What how did you get involved in it? In what? In camp Constitution. And well, Hal and I, we met, what, 2005? 2005, Valley Forge, we met. Yeah, there. and he heard me... In we got a 15 couple, minutes. He, Good, okay. he heard me in a couple of speaking engagements. And the way I got involved with JPS, which eventually led into Camp Constitution, was the fact that growing up in the 40s and having grown up in the traditional black Baptist church, I've always understood and always believed that Jesus Christ was Lord and the only way to God. I never believed in Islam. I never believed in liberalism. I, you know, thus born in the 40s, you know. Uh, conservative traditional thinking was just common sense. Right. If yeah. you'd have told me in the 50s about a man marrying a man, I said, man, he ready for the nut now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or killing babies, any such kind of nonsense as that. Uh -huh. So what happened was some way around 2004, uh, I got into a conversation with somebody and they were talking about the racism that was prevalent in the John Bird Society. And like most blacks today, I believed it. Some kind of way, somehow, I knew it was the Holy Ghost, led me to go on JBS.org, and I was looking for days for the Ku Klux Klan <laughs> racist uh, information. I went through every page on JBS.org, never found it. Everything I did find, I was in agreement with. Their love of country, their love of God, the love of the, the original intent of the Constitution and the Founding Fathers. I said, wait a minute. They, they must have the, the real agenda on the download, not God. <laughs> you, know, you know what you did? You did the same thing Frederick Douglass did. Yeah, and I couldn't find it. So what I did, I says, they go, I said, I'm going to play this thing off. So I contacted uh, Julie White, who was then over at the Speakers Bureau, and she was in charge of, of membership. And I said, send me your, your membership packet. And I didn't go into details that I was blank. I, I get the packet, I look through all the material, everything lined up with what I believe. Love of God, love of country, love mm -hmm. of patriotism. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, I got, you know, I've been hearing all my life that these are a bunch of redneck, white <laughs> racists, but I can't find nothing. What's up with that? So when I couldn't find anything, I didn't got Julie White back on the phone. 
And then I, man, I came out the closet and I told her, I said, you know, closet. yeah, <laughs> I said, I'm a black American conservative. And I've heard all my life that the JBS is a racist organization. And I was looking to find a collaborating evidence in that regard, but I can't find anything. I want to join. She says, you know, I love your voice. She says, do you do any speaking? I said, yes, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm also a former uh, disc jockey and t uh, talk show host, and I'm an ordained minister. She says, you need to be in our speakers bureau. Sure. So we went through a process for a period of time, and I ended up getting on the JBS Speakers Bureau, see? And then they started sending me around the country before they changed the Speakers Bureau up speaking. So that's how I got involved with the John wow. Birch Society, because one of the most unique places in JBS is to have black, traditional, patriotic, constitutional, conservative black ministers mm -hmm. speaking for the JBS. They, they don't know what to do with that. <laughs> 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 See, because that's way outside. That's way outside. That's way outside the box. Right. <laughs> way that's outside. way outside. They can't be. They, you know, <laughs> that's way outside the box. That's why I was telling this brother and telling you guys, there's a place that God will use the foolish things of this to earth, to confound the wise. The wise. See, the wise. that's a foolish thing that confounds the wise. That's right. Down. See, because they don't know how to deal with that. They don't. So usually they'll just ignore you yeah. or say you're a Tom or, Uncle you know, Tom, or some yeah. kind of nonsense. Yeah, yeah. But they can't deal with it because, you know, they're, well, he black, he a preacher, he must be a liberal. <laughs> yeah. But see, my background, as you probably already know, I can speak to those in high places because I have a master's degree from Harvard University. There you go. But I can also speak to the gangbangers because I'm an ex-convict. Ex mm -hmm. see. Was a dope fiend mm -hmm. from 1966 when I came out the army to 1976. Ten years, I shot heroin every day in the Bronx. So they don't know how to peg me. Wow. Pigeonhole, you can't. They can't pigeonhole. Yeah. They say, man, this guy's a dope fiend. That's an ex dome fiend, and this guy now got a degree from Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a conservative? <laughs> How do we deal with him? So most times he just ignore me. I don't want to make time. Don't pay him any money. <laughs> so that's why I always, when, when Hal says, hey, man, we need to get you on TV. We need to get you, man, in more speaking environments. That's right. We need to get you, we need to get you out there. That's why we wrote this book. We just came out. This is just hard this off just, the presses. This yeah. just came wow. out, the, uh, what, yesterday? Else. Today? Just, I guess got in the mail, so. Just got it, yeah. <laughs> Just, wow. They just so show it up to the audience, so they will well, all go to Amazon and buy copies of no, it. No, we can't do that. We can't do that because then we'll oh, it's public access. Oh, yeah. I see. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. But uh, I already lost one show doing that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they're, not, they're not afraid about yeah. kicking me off. You yeah. know my shows yeah. are. Yeah. yeah. But um, uh, so, so I mean, what is Camp Constitution? We we can't talk about Cam, that. Why don't you well, join Camp here. Constitution yeah. is Betty, a. It's a uh, association of all volunteers, mm -hmm. and we publish materials. Uh, sometimes we take stuff like Noah Webster's uh, book he did on global uh, refuting global warming in 1810. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah books like yeah. we just got here. We run a week-long summer camp, mm -hmm. and uh, we do it. We do this Up in this, Ringe, uh, New Hampshire. In Ringe, New Hampshire, at uh, Intervarsity, uh, to uh, to Nippy, uh mm -hmm. Intervarsity camp. And at the camp, we have uh, some wonderful instructors like Reverend Kraft, mm -hmm. uh, Garrett Lear, the Patriot Pastor. Uh, each year we have we have some staple speakers, but we'll have new people come in all the time. Uh, Chris Ann Hall will be one of the speakers this year. Some She's an attorney. Some familiar with her ministry. She travels around the country. And mm -hmm. our, our, it's not, it's Christ-centered, but it's open to d different denominations. We get Catholics and mm -hmm, Protestants, yeah. and, and we do reach out to people, but uh, we go to homeschool shows. We have information tables at homeschool shows. But our summer camp, it's for all for entire families. Mm -hmm. So mother and father can come with little mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. three and under are free. And it's, it's all volunteers, so we're not making any money off this. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have people who donate to help, to help uh, you know, so we can offer tuitions to people with, with big, like a family of 15. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to send, you know, but no. we can help with that. And uh, we also have the folks who actually run the camp have offered tuitions to some inner city people. Mm -hmm. you know, you get some, we to want get to have some more, of, but we're not, try, we're, we're, not yeah, trying right, to, right. we're not appealing to gangbangers. Right. We, you know, because that's not where the camp. It's not a halfway house. Right. You know? Right. Right. The camp is to. It's to. The mission of the camp is to, um, to, to raise the next to help to help this generation already, teaching the teaching the um, teaching the present, and uh, preparing the future. Mm -hmm. Right, future of the future of the freedom movement. Because mm -hmm. if we don't, the next generation doesn't take that baton of freedom, we're going to lose it. Mm -hmm. And the other side is moving awfully fast, and we we know that. Mm -hmm. 
So we just we have about 100, 115. But our vision, and the vision is mentioned in the book, is to start other camps around mm -hmm. the country. And it mm -hmm. takes a lot of commitment. You think, mm -hmm. what's one week? Right. But a lot of goes into this yeah. one-week oh, program. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. oh, and, yeah. and then we have a lot of our, vi our classes are on YouTube. So what we do yeah. in front of 100 people can be seen by millions. So if you go to the campconstitution.net website, you mm -hmm. can see the YouTube link and see mm -hmm. Reverend Class uh, class classes. We mm -hmm. have some writers. We have a gentleman who's written a few books. He's a, he's become an expert on creation versus evolution. Mm -hmm. We take the creation perspective. So people can see that. We mm -hmm. had Reverend Scott Lively discuss the, the, the pink swastika and the mm -hmm. history of the homosexual movement. So people really understand where it's coming from, the root of this. Mm -hmm. uh, we have... Uh, We've had writers discuss the Constitution, uh, America's Christian and Godly heritage, irrefutable sure. facts. Mm -hmm. You know, Reverend Kraft. Everything comes is documented. Here, all these people here, they're quotes. The dec declaration you know? yeah. is is just you almost read the Bible. And we they also got, we also uh, came out of the Bible. there's a class that we're going to do a lot. We last year we started with is defending your worldview. Mm -hmm. Biblical so, worldview. So you can know all this stuff, but you, when the young people are going off to the colleges or to the public schools. We mm -hmm. have a lot of homeschoolers, but yeah. homeschoolers, no one's immune from this because the other side has invested millions and billions to turn these children as quickly turn as they can. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. so our goal is to make sure they can defend the mm -hmm. truth. Apologetics. Just, all mm -hmm. the facts are yeah. great, mm -hmm. but without the spiritual background, exactly. too. Exactly. And exactly. we have a lot of fun as well. We have, yeah. uh, a we take a hike at Mount Manadnock. Yeah, it's we, not uh, a day camp. It's a residential day where you stay there all Good food, excellent food, food excellent great, living yeah, quarters. And it's, it's nice. Good fellowship. Man, it's People will come as far as Western Michigan because it's a place. Mm -hmm. It's a place where you can relax with your family and yeah, friends. We week. had a gentleman from uh, the Sudan. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. With his uh, with his family. Hope he'll be the, talk about his life and life under Sharia law. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, he should be a good guest for your show too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and we, we, we do field trips this year. We're going to take a field trip. We hope to um, to um, Old Ironsides and Bunker Hill. Now, to us living in Boston, what's the big deal? But if you're coming from other parts of the country, right. and how many people you know live in the shadow of, of, of Bunker Hill but never been there? You know. Yeah. So we have, and we'll do our most of the time. We do our own tour guiding. You know, and right. um, you know, then right we have softball games, mm -hmm. wiffle ball games, and. So all kinds of great fun. Right, right, right nice across the street, right across, I know we got, we got a about a minute yeah, and a half yeah. left, but right across the street is where the Adamses are buried, mm -hmm. in that yeah. church. I don't yeah. know if did you yeah, tell Yeah, Unitarian. Well, I, I saw the church. Yeah, I saw the building. Yeah, buried about down below. In you the basement. Go in, you can go in and see it. Yeah, we I have, was, we yeah. have uh, stuff all around Quincy. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, I saw the building. Thing. He showed me the building. We went to Adam's house, Peace The mansion, the mansion or the other two? The mansion, Okay. Well, anyway, Hal, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. We'll have you on again, of course, Reverend. Thank you very much for God, coming on. God, God, thank next, you for having me. Next time you're in this vicinity, all you got to do is tell Hal, got, say, yeah, you just say, no, bring it off again. All he asks well, I'm going to come up and work with, with my brother anyhow. We're working oh, yeah, with some of these little to. knucklehead kids. Well, when you're you doing to. it, come, come okay. in here and talk about it. Okay. All we'll right? Do. We'll Th do. Thanks for coming on. It was a great show. I hope you learned something out there today about everything. And there are black conservatives out there. A whole lot of us. There's a whole lot of them, but I guess they're the afraid to come out of the closet, yeah, a lot of them, I guess. Yeah, well. But, but when they come out of the closet, I bet you they won't be asked to throw the first pitch at a Red Sox game. No, I no, guarantee no, you no, that no, they won't, won't be asked, no. <laughs> they won't be asked that. But thanks, guys, for coming on. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Right, time. And hope you enjoyed the show. All right, that was good. That was great. great. That was great. Thank you, guys. That was appreciate it. In 76 they had a dream to give everyone the right To live free as we choose in this land both day and night The founders died with hope we would continue to see Many have tried and many have died to keep our liberty Liberty is not cheap and it comes with a price And we have to pay our dues Next time you look up at that flag, remember who gave it to you. Washington, Jefferson, Franklin, and many more put their lives on the line to defend what they're fighting for. So let's hold to our rights that